In this designer class lesson, we are going to be making photo corners. And when you hear of photo corners, you probably first think of your grandparents' albums, um, where they didn't have the fancy albums that we have now that have the plastic sleeves. They had to actually use photo corners that had sticky on the back to adhere the photos onto um, pages in their book. And this is still sometimes done in paper scrapbooking uh, um, for the effect, but in digital scrapbooking, um, photo corners can be made in so many different fun ways and shapes and forms and um, if you're making them for a kit you can fill them with the papers from your kit or the colors from your kit and um, they're really a lot of fun and they're so useful because uh, they are uh, useful in, ev in, in a simple way to add pizzazz to your layout without really um, having a whole frame. Sometimes the whole frames will um, detract from your uh, photos, but just something in the corner will um, allow the photo to remain the focal point. And so you have here some shape files, and I'm not going to show you how I made every single one of these, but we will do at least the basic one and um, look at all the others on how I made the shapes. Uh, we did do the shape lesson, and so um, now uh, I'm not going to review how to use the shape tool. You'll have to go back to that lesson. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at these. We have here just the um, basic simple one. And if I'm on the uh, shape selection tool, and you can see here what I did was just use the rectangular shape tool. <coughs> and I made a shape here, and I made a shape here and then uh, using the add to shape selection and then I added a subtract to selection here and here. Now actually looking back I didn't have to make two little ones I could have made one big one so let's make one big one to show you um, that way uh, there is a one little tip I can give you here that I don't think is in that shape selection or the, the shape tool tutorial and I think it's important to learn here because um, we want these angles of the subtractions to be just right. So I'm going to make a new layer and in order to make my shapes I did choose uh, view and grid and um, I um, for my purposes um, decided to go ahead and use these blocks and um, to make them the same size. Now you don't have to make them the same size. That would be a great way to, to uh, change them up to make them something different. But I did use one, two, three, four squares this way and then in counting this square again, one, two, three, four, this way, so they were the same, and I did fill in on the grid, of course, from previous lessons, you should know, at least maybe in course two, somewhere I've done this, guides and grids under preferences, and um, right now I have it the the grid lines are every one inch and divided into subsections of four so um, I think my corners might be a little thick if you wanted to make them a little thinner um, you could change the uh, subdivisions um, or your grid lines one or the other in here uh, to change that up to make yours uh, different um, than mine but I'm on my new layer and, and I have blue as my foreground color so this will look different. I'm going to go ahead and get my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to just draw that first box and it kind of um, with the grid it kind of actually uh, um, snips right into uh, the uh, grids so you don't have to 
be as, as precise. And I'm going to click on the Add to Shape area because I want to make sure I add to this layer. And I am going to make that. Now that's great, but we have to take those off of the uh, corners, the edges. And so I'm going to get my subtract from, and I'm going to go ahead and just draw me a big box. Um, we'll have, we're going to have to fix it later. But I want this to be at an angle to take away from my uh, shape. And to get it at the perfect angle, I'm going to go back in here to my Shape Selection tool, and I'm going to click to select this shape that we're subtracting from. And you, when I do, you see it has the bounding box. But here's the little tip trick that I have for you. Because if I just start grabbing this and turning it, my angle isn't going to be precise. But if I hit Control T on my keyboard, for the transform tool, you're going to see up here at the top now I have additional options to transform this shape. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the numbers right in here and manually type in 45 degree angle because that's going to give me this angle that I need and, and have it precise. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that change. Um, and now you can see my transform box goes away. But then I can um, go ahead and finish playing with this. It doesn't really need to be... Oops, you don't want to grab those corners. Let's um, position... I'm going to position this one right here so it's on that edge. And then I'm going to grow it this way. Look at it growing. I've got to replace it. See, maybe this is why I did the small boxes. <laughs> I just had to make it two small boxes instead of one. Um, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to go ahead and nudge this into place. And what I'm looking for is that it meets this corner here and it meets that corner there. So you would zoom in and click OK. And now um, you have your shape. And this time it's subtracted with one big box. See, if we go back to this one, I did two boxes. And I did the control T and um, did them to the 45 degree angle. And it was a little bit easier because you're working with smaller shapes and, and positioning. And then once I got this shape, let's turn this one back on. Once I got this shape, I didn't have to continue uh, making it for each layer. I simply hit Control J, and then you see over here in the in the palettes, it's now a duplicated layer. And then I hit Control T again for that transform tool, and oops, that is a mistake that I kept making that you should not make. That was moving just one of the shapes. Let's. Um, do this again. The key is that I am on this shape selection tool and when you're duplicating these and rotating them you want to get off of that and get onto your move tool. So now let's hit control J and um, we could even move it. Sometimes I hit control T just to make sure it moves okay and that you're grabbing the right thing. Uh, but I simply moved it over here. And you know what? If you if you grab this, maybe that's why I hit Control T. Hit Control T. And if you grab this little dot here in the middle and move it around and put it exactly where you might want it to rotate on its axis, axis on its center axis and put it there and then you can go up and do um, I think it is image rotate and now you see rotate all layers is grayed out which is great I love that <laughs> um, 
and that's because I did that control T and choose um, in this case flip layer horizontally and actually I didn't have that in the circle in the right spot and so I'm going to put it back in my place so that's basically how you do it. Let's do that again. It sounded more complicated than it is. Control J, Control T, and I am going to. This is back on the selection tool. See, let's get on the. I I had this problem, and I know what we want to be on is not that tool but this one there and I had to keep clicking until I got the bounding box to just be here that was a little tricky at times oh now I got three or four boxes control T I'm promising you it's not as hard as it seems <laughs> I'm promising you once you get the roll and the hang of it, control T and let's just drag this down. I don't know why that center isn't there and I'm just going to put it down here and do image, rotate, flip vertical this time and put it in place. I don't like that being a big box and click OK and we got it there but you get the idea how you can um, rotate these around now now look now why is that that way <laughs> this is the way it should have selected it a second ago let's try it again control J and um, I'm gonna hit enter nope why is it doing that I don't know. Okay, so we can hit Control T and edit, rotate, and this time we just want to do horizontally and um, put it above that one and there. Let's click off. Oh, look, you click off and go back on and it works. Let's try it. Control J. Click off and go back on. Oh, look! All right, now you only have bo a bounding box like it's supposed to be. There we go. I figured it out. So there's a little trick. Control J, click off, and then click back on it, and now it's only got the bounding box on. Isn't that about nuts? Let's review some of the other ones. I had trouble with that. This one here is let's go back to our selection tool so you can see what I made is um, of course really simple it's just two squares doing adding and this one is a square here let's get my why is it not working oh I know why to make this one I decided I needed it two different layers and so um, I this is just a shape that is the same as this only not as wide you can see this one um, over here I made it I wanted it to be wider than this one so it's actually one square and a half a square wide but this is a shape here and then this one is a separate shape on another uh, layer there it is and in order to make this one it, I, I had to do a bunch of additions um, I made you can see a square here and a square here to fill in all those little 
gaps and then I just made a bunch of additions of circles and I moved them around until I got them placed just the way I thought they would look best and so that's how I made that shape and so this is actually on two separate layers and the reason for that it was when I added my styles I wanted them to work separately I was planning that one out ahead of time I didn't want them to be merged together um, I could do that and see if I could get something uh, different but for this purpose I wanted them together and then after I took a lot of time to line up these circles then I just duplicated them and rotated this shape as uh, we saw before this one is a shape here a shape here and I believe let's click off here it is it is a here's how I made it um, it is a shape it is a circle that I made here and then I actually used um, the subtraction tool this is also done on two separate layers because I wanted to fill them with different styles so I made these the darker green corner and then I made a circle to match up to the edges right here in the corners and then I used the subtraction tool to subtract the circle over here and to subtract the circle over here so I subtracted then from the circle so that's actually um, done on two different layers also this one is pretty simple it is a square here and it, it looks more complicated than it is it is a square here and then it is a rectangle and this time I used one big one and I rotated it 45 degrees and dropped it in there to subtract from it and then then there is this one here in the center which I can't seem to grab there it is um, which is I just drew a subtraction one the size of one of these boxes and then I dropped it right in there so the center of it was centered so I knew everything was centered so I subtracted it again so these two boxes are both subtracting from just a square it's actually um, not too complicated it looks harder than it is and this one is the same as this one over here only I added yet a third subtraction of a little circle to knock out that circle and then this one up here let's see what I did I actually for this one I utilized the rounded rectangular tool and I uh, made a rounded rectangular and then I did another round I was just playing to see what I could come up with I made another rounded rectangular one which is right here to subtract from the other shape to get the curve on the inside and and I didn't like then in this corner here I didn't like this cupping around and so I went ahead and made these subtraction um, rectangles so that I could make this straight going out so that's how I made that one so they're pretty easy now I want to review with you what I did with these after I made them and I have a folder here with them in it let me make this bigger here is the corner shape number one and now what I want to tell you is it you do not want to um, let me close this again you do not want to just make one of these and rotate it around and the reason is um, that you want your light source to be accurate on all four of them 
and so when you go to add your layer styles and things you want um, we'll observe some of that in some of these uh, you want your light source to be accurate and it wasn't quite as important in this one but if I open it up um, you can see I for this one I simply uh, had I filled it with a, a layer style a commercial use layer style I have um, and then I used uh, some uh, stitching action, a commercial use stitching etch action that I have on it and then I went back in and I did some dodging and burning around the edges so each one of them would um, kind of look uh, unique and so there's what they look like in use. So that was kind of simple so what you do with it is um, to make it unique is is what you do with it afterwards. Now this one took me a really long time to make. Um, basically I took a piece of felt that I had scanned in a long time ago and I used that to fill it. Um, this is a uh, element that I made. I think it's in my patriotic kit. I made it a long time ago. I put a uh, layer over it to change the hue and saturation so that it went with the corner. Uh, but what took me a long time to do with this one, um, I actually added a layer style for an inner shadow but I had to do that in the full version of Photoshop and I played with it a long time to get it where I liked it but what took me a long time was all this dirty grungy stuff um, I actually uh, you know used brushes and manually put them on there and then use the eraser and partially erase some and and uh, you know I had to do that for each one of them and um, to make it look realistic and unique and each corner to be a little bit different. The brushwork that I did actually took a long time and then I think I actually um, went back in and did a little burning around the edges of this to make it look a little more realistic also and so there's what they look like in use. And so um, get creative don't just uh, you know if you want to be a really good designer and not that I am <laughs> but I'm going to encourage you to get creative don't just fill it with some paper let's look at number three and on this one remember I had two separate layers and this you actually cannot really do very well in just Photoshop unless you have layer styles from somebody from Photoshop Elements because I, I did these layer styles in the full version of Photoshop and really played and really tweaked <laughs> for quite a while and um, so uh, each one of these sets of photo corners took me at least two hours to finish that was after I spent hours making and dreaming up all the shapes but you'll remember the one with all the circles and once I got layer styles on it um, that's what this turned out to be now what's important here is to note and we may be able to look at it I eh, can't look at it very well from here but um, the on this one having four separate ones was really important because of the light source um, you can see uh, maybe if you look carefully of course with the light source coming down from the edge this edge is brighter and these little edges are brighter on this angle than they are here. See there is no brightness on these edges here like they are on these edges. It's because of the light source. This edge here is brighter because the light is coming down from the top left. And then if you go further, you see this edge is brighter and then there's this these edges don't have the light, but these do. So depending on where they set, of course this one, all of these here have the white. So depending on where they set, um, 
uh, it depends on how the light source comes onto the angles. So that is why it's important to just not make one and then copy it and turn it around for everybody. You need to actually make them all four and then apply the layer styles in place. And so that when you put them on to here, you can see this has got the white right here on the edge and this doesn't and so that makes it more realistic. So I can't stress that enough. People wonder why you only have, why you don't just make one. And this one I went ahead and this was actually uh, jeans that had the stitching in them already. I didn't make that stitching. Um, the stitching was in the scanned in jeans and um, and so I just stuck them on there but this one also took me a long time because I did go back and dodge and burn around the edge as you can see here this is not uh, straight dodging you can see like right here it's not as dark as here so it makes it kind of lumpy and then I made this little glitter thing in um, Art Rage it took me a while going back and forth I didn't want anything to take away from the uh, photo and so I didn't want colors and shapes and it, it took me a while to get one I liked I actually recolored it when I got in here but I thought it just needed a little extra girly pizzazz to it and so you can see this one is actually dodged and burned a whole lot different I had to dodge and burn in around the hole to make it seem like it was going down in it each one has its own different dodging and burning to it and there's what those look like in play so those were kind of fun to make number five these remind me of military canvas this is actually filled with that same felt shape that I used in the other one um, but what this one didn't take me too long to make but I did play with the layer styles in the full version of Photoshop uh, for a while um, to get this uh, line in the middle around the edges the way I liked it um, I actually when I I actually duplicated the shape and had to move in I couldn't just resize it down I had to move in the subtraction ones to get it um, to uh, go right along the edge there but I decided to do that because that made these points much sharper uh, than if I would have created a new shape and the edges um, took me a while to make that uh, layer style in the full version too to get that so it it looked realistic just reminds me of that blanket material um, or even um, the little patches you put on uh, uniforms kind of reminds me of that but here's what they look like I was going after a color that was very usable and so even something simple takes me a long time to create this one drove me batty oh, but that's what I did with here I took this out of my heritage kit a piece of paper and then I filled this one with a layer style that I have and I added this drop shadow in here um, and the drop shadow come out the edges over here and over here and I cannot tell you how many times I did a control alt E to put all of them on a new layer and get rid of the drop shadow and every time I think I redid it resaved them five or six times trying to get rid of um, the jaggies as we would call them the outside of it so that they looked clean uh, but um, I think I got it and you can see I got a little bit of a another a different um, layer style I did in the full version along the edges here too but for something so simple man that took me a long time and there they are in use so we can now go to the last one I made and that you'll remember it's kinda like a moon shape it made me think it'd be good for a if I did it a lot differently for uh, you know little moon kit a night night kit for kids um, this one again the layer style is done in the full version of Photoshop played a long time <laughs> to get that um, 
that way. And then this is actually a commercial use element that I may, got from Rachel Scraps. Um, I bought it for DSD on the same day I was making this and I was like, yes, got me new material. Um, but um, the this element here in the middle actually has uh, two different layer styles on it to make it look like it's gone down into it and I'm telling you I can't tell you how long I played with the layer styles to get it just right to where I liked it but this is another example where I can show you it does matter that you have to make four of these look at where the light source is on here and then you don't see any in here and then on here you see the light source coming this way and then over here it's on right here and then here now it's on the inside so it's, it is important to use all four and it's not only that it was important the light source is different on um, the that I made around this to make make it look like it was indented but there's what it looks like um, in use so uh, that would be how I made all of those. It took me a very long time, at least two or three hours a piece, but it took me, you know, probably four hours to sit here and make all these shapes. Designing is not easy. Designers do not get paid enough. Um, can't stress that enough. And if you want to become a really good designer, do take time with each and every element. Um, don't try to make so many like I did. Uh, make play with shapes and get yourself some good ones, two or three, one or two, and because uh, you don't need this many photo corners for one kit. I just got carried away as I wanted to give you a lot of examples um, to inspire you. That's why I got carried away, but you really only need one or two photo corners for each kit, and so. Uh, the good thing is I have these shapes made now and if I am making a kit and I want a corner I can borrow on this and um, make new corners to match my kit. So I look forward to seeing what you can do on the photo corners.